The Hazards Culture and Indigenous Communities Project started in 2017 and since that time the project team have been talking to practitioners and policy makers engaged in cultural fire projects across southern Australia. Cultural fire is the suite of Indigenous peoples fire management knowledge and practices including burning country and now we are turning the project's findings into principles and tools that we hope will sustain and support these great initiatives. There's been two key findings from this project. The first is that Southern Australian land and fire agencies generally don't have very good relationships with the traditional owners of the lands that they manage. This is something that agencies need to have a look at to understand why and, and work to fix. The second thing is that many of the successful programs in Southern Australia today are successful because of the personal commitment of the staff putting in the effort to make sure that they happen. Agencies generally don't have the administrative support, the budgets, the policies, the training to support these uh, programs. And that's something that also needs to be addressed. For us, healing country is about getting our people back out on country and um, implementing cultural burning and cultural practices again. That, that way it makes us stronger, makes mentally it makes us stronger as well. And it brings our community back together and um, heals you know, um, the breaks of the past, I guess. And, and the injustices that have happened to our people as well. We've all got that interconnection. Uh, with it, we've just got to be entrusted more within ourselves, but also looking for the overall health of the change of climate or climate change that we're experiencing now uh, to evolve and adapt that environment uh, for the continuum of us as Australians, uh, as a collective, but also um, empowering and promoting our cultural continuum. It really is still a regulated space. So in terms of how traditional owners get on the ground and actually deliver fire, they still need approvals around policy and that to be alleviated. So PPE is a big, big issue. Um, having women, children, elders out on site while we're burning is a big issue. They're things that we need to work towards um, to, to re-regulate and actually give traditional owners, I guess, the tools to, to deliver fire out on country in their own right without being too heavily state regulated. Uh, I think the keys are respect for culture, um, uh, particularly for agencies to respect ind Indigenous culture and the processes and the knowledge that are part of caring for country. Uh, it's quite a challenge given that we still have the Western European legal framework to operate under, but it's about how do we make uh, that framework work to empower the communities to, to do what they need to do. There's always someone in the room that knows more than you do, and so you don't, I don't have to be the decision maker or the person that says this is what we're going to do, but if I can be that person that adds weight or support to help that person that knows more about that thing do that thing, then I think that's yeah something that we can learn from. Government, I think, feels like it needs to know all the answers and be the decision maker all the time, uh, but doesn't doesn't always actually know. So how do we allow communities to, to be that, have faith or trust in that? People need to understand that, you know, at the basic level, you know, research is wanting to understand and communicate what we know um, with others. And so we need to support each other to sort of be able to develop our own methodologies and, and, and understand other people's approaches and what we can learn from them. And so for me, you know, there's a whole heap of Indigenous-led research that needs to be developed and supported where people have knowledge and practice that needs to be recognised as knowledge and practice and, and it doesn't necessarily need to be incorporated into Western or academic knowledge systems, but it can be. And if people want to do that, I think that's really useful work because it's helping with that cross-cultural communication. In a modelling fire experience world, it looks great on maps and papers and databases, but the reality is we need to observe country more and be a part of the environment. Fire, you know, burns where, where the fuel is. You know, it doesn't sort of, un, it doesn't kind of stop because there's a, some sort of tenure or legal boundary. Or, and so it kind of forces people to understand they have to work together. And it's done that for millennia in a cultural context where Aboriginal communities, you know, have learnt fire law from lightning and birds and, you know, and, and the land, and they've kind of developed these knowledge systems of practice. And so it's a great pathway for us to kind of come together and understand these are the roles and responsibilities custodians have and land managers have and fire agencies have and 
you know, land holders and property holders and all these different, you know, stakeholders and rights holders have, how they can work together um, and how they can, we can sort of build a, a resilient and healthy landscape for people to, to be able to be connected and to look after um, their, their values and practices.